Well, I did it again, you guys. I was bound and determined to catch my cucumbers before they got to be monsters, and I thought I was doing good, and then turns out I just came out and I have some baseball bat cucumbers again. But that doesn't mean I still can't make some really good homemade pickles, and today I'm excited to show you the old-fashioned way to make pickles that are not only delicious, but actually also probiotic for you too. So let's pick a few more and head inside. So there are three different categories of pickles, or at least that's how I like to think of it. And it can get a little bit confusing when you're trying to figure out what type of pickle you wanna make, so let's break this down. Number one, we have our traditional canned vinegar pickles. These are the ones that your grandma probably made. You put the spices and the vinegar and the water in the jar with the cucumbers, you put them in your canner, and then they're shelf stable for as long as you want them to be. The next kind would be an icebox pickle, and this is a kind that I showed you last year. I'll link that video down in the show notes. And it's similar to the canned pickles. You use the same spices and vinegar, but instead of canning them, you can just stick them in your refrigerator so you don't have to heat up your kitchen, and they'll last a good couple of months and taste really, really good. But the third type of pickle is the one I'm gonna show you today. And this is the old fashioned way to preserve a cucumber. It doesn't require vinegar. Instead, we're going to use a salt water brine to give our pickles that trademark sourness. Sometimes these pickles are a little extra tangy, a little bubbly, and they are probiotic because this is a fermented food. So these are outrageously good for you. Okay, so here's how we're going to make this happen. So number one, don't let the word fermented scare you off because it doesn't mean you need a bunch of crazy special equipment. We're going to ferment our cucumbers in regular old mason jars today. You could use a fancy crock if you have one, but it's not a requirement. Now, the most important part of this recipe are the cucumbers, of course, and like I explained out in the garden, the smaller the cucumber, the better. And the ideal size that I like to have for my pickles would be, well, where did it go? So this is right about the size that you want. And the reason we go for a smaller cucumber is that these will be crunchier and crisper. You can absolutely cut up a big old cucumber like this one into spears, but it's gonna be much, much harder to get that crunch in the finished product. That may or may not be a big deal to you, but a lot of people like those crunchy pickles. So for this jar, I'm going to select the littlest ones in my basket here and go from there. So I'm gonna get these guys washed really quick. And then I'll just trim the blossom end off of these cucumbers. It is thought that that end contains some enzymes that sometimes cause pickles to get a little mushy, so I figure better safe than sorry. You could do as big of a batch as you would like with these. If you have a gallon jar, you could use that, or a half gallon jar, or do a whole bunch of quarts. Um, there's really no limit to the size here. Now, with a bigger cucumber like this one, you can see he'll fit into this jar, but it's gonna be a little tight. So you can cut these, but my rule of thumb is the more cuts I make, the more mushy the cucumber will be. So I like to do as minimal cutting as possible. Sometimes that's unavoidable with a big old cucumber, but with this guy, I think just two cuts should get the job done. Let's see, I might also cut this one in half just to make this a little easier to fit in the jar. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is prepare our brine. So if you've watched my sauerkraut video, then you probably remember the 2% brine. It's super easy. So I'm just gonna take an extra quart jar and some fine sea salt. This is the same salt I use for all of my cooking and curing and baking. This is Redmond salt. It's natural, it doesn't have iodine or any junk in it, and that makes it a perfect candidate for fermented projects. So to make a quart of brine, that'll be more than enough for this recipe, plus a little extra, you're gonna need four cups of water. And you want this to be non-chlorinated water because we're looking for all of the good bacteria to do its thing in this ferment and chlorine kills bacteria. So use distilled water or tap water if you have it that's non-chlorinated, or you can leave your chlorinated water to sit out overnight and it evaporates pretty quickly. Okay, and to my jar, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of fine, sea salt. So the size of the salt really does matter because a bigger grain salt is going to take up 
more room in the spoon and it's not gonna be the same quantity as a tablespoon of fine salt. So make sure that you are using a fine salt if you're using my formulation. I'm just gonna stir this up and let it dissolve completely. Now you might notice that my salt has kind of a pinkish brown look and that's because it is uh, full of vitamins and minerals and it is the real deal. It's not been refined and processed. So sometimes it will make my brine a little bit cloudy and that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. And I actually like that because it means that I'm getting all those extra nutrients in there. I'm going to set this aside for a minute and we're going to fill our jar with the rest of our ingredients. So technically all you need for this are just cucumbers and the brine that we just made. But if you're like me, you like your pickles to have a little extra flavor. So I have a little set of spices that I like to add to all my pickles, whether they're icebox or canned or this fermented version. So first off, got to have the garlic. And, you know, I think most recipes call for a clove per jar. I'm just going to go with four just to be safe because you can't have too much garlic. Um, I also add, like to add a couple bay leaves in. Two or three will work. You'll see my measurements are very subjective here and you can play with these as much as you like. If you hate garlic, just leave it out. If you don't like bay leaves, leave it out. Um, so a really important component here is the dill for most folks. And so I like to add um, fresh dill if I have it. I don't have any in the garden right now. So I'm gonna use some dried dill weed, about a tablespoon or so, maybe a little extra. And then a tablespoon of mustard seed. And I like to add a couple peppercorns, but I don't have peppercorns today, so I'm just gonna add some pinches of ground black pepper. Now, if you wanted to do sweet pickles, you could add more of those spices, allspice, things like that. Um, we're just more of a garlic dill family, so this is my tried and true set of add-ins. So funny little story about this mustard seed. My dad used to drive a grain truck and he would have leftover uh, grain and seeds that he would bring home. And so my mom gave me a bag of this quinoa, kind of yellow. And I thought, well, this will be great. We love quinoa. And so one morning I put it in my Instant Pot, cooked up the quinoa and it just looked a little funny. So I gave it to the kids and it tasted absolutely horrible, disgusting. Uh, turns out the quinoa was actually this mustard seed. And uh, just so you know, mustard seed makes a horrible hot breakfast. So now we're just gonna put our cucumbers into the jar. I like a wide mouth jar for this just because it makes it easier to get in and out. Uh, but regular mouth is fine. Might not be able to fit all these in there. That's all right. Get as many as I can. Put the little baby guy down there. Let's see, can I fit the... No, okay, we're gonna call that good for this jar. Okay, you can see we're packed in there pretty tightly. And now we're just gonna add our brine over the top. So I'm gonna stir it one more time to make sure we're pretty dissolved and mixed together. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this up. I'm gonna leave about an inch and a half or so of head space at the top. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, we're almost done. Now we just gotta get it set up for its ferment. And the most important part when we're fermenting anything is that it stays under the brine. And there's a couple different ways you can accomplish this. I uh, like these glass weights. Can you see that? It's clear. And so this just sits on top of the vegetables or fruit and holds it under the brine because anything that sticks up above that salt water is gonna get gross. So you can see that just is holding those cucumbers down. Another option uh, would be a spring like this one. I'll link these in the show notes. They're pretty handy. Um, if you have a lesser amount of food in the jar and you need to hold it down. Now, obviously I don't have a lot of room in this jar, so I'd really have to squish that spring, but these are pretty cool. Okay, now we just gotta get our lid on and we'll be done. So this can trip up a lot of new fermenters. You absolutely can go the easy route and just use a regular old canning jar lid, screw it on, where there's a little bit of wiggle room left and call it good. Nothing wrong with that. Now, if you wanna go next level up, you can get a special sort of airlock or lid for fermented projects. I have a couple different kinds here. This one, whoa, whoa. okay. <laughs> <clears throat> not in there very well. Okay. This one is a set from fermentools.com. And basically you just put this little assembly on top and use your regular canning ring 
to secure it. And what this does is it allows the gases from the food, which normally develop during this process, to escape, but it doesn't allow air in because this is an anaerobic or oxygen-free process. That's the goal. So that's the benefit of an airlock, but again, you don't have to have one. Um, another type of airlock that I really enjoy using would be this one from Trellis and Company. Just a simple stainless steel lid with this little nipple in the middle. Actually, I think it's upside down. Oh, maybe not. Okay, there we go. And so again, it's letting the gases out but not letting air in. So I'm just gonna use this one on my pickles today. And that's it. Now I'm just gonna set this over on my counter at room temperature for about five to seven days. So sometimes this will bubble over a little bit um, and liquid will come out the lid, that's fine. So I do like to put a saucer under my jars usually just to capture any of the juice. Keep in mind, the warmer your house, the faster this process will go. So keep an eye on it. You can remove the lid if you like and smell it every couple days. So you can kind of learn to gauge the changes in the food. And after about a week, do a check. And if it smells good, it should be tanging in that pleasant sort of sour. You can remove your airlock if you're using one, put a regular lid on the jar and then stick it in your fridge and keep it there for three, four months, maybe even more. As these continue to sit in your fridge, they'll ferment a little bit over time and continue to improve in flavor. And after about six months, you'll notice that the pickles might start to degrade a little bit, but you can really eat them as long as they taste good to you. So if you like this idea of preserving your food without needing a bunch of fancy equipment or to heat up your kitchen, check out this video where I'll show you how to preserve cabbage the old fashioned way.